the function of the mass is to be worn and uh, it's for people to have the masqueraders say call and response to the public who are seeing them so when you are participating in carnaval this is you know there's there's songs that, and, and and sayings that they say and, and they call and response to it so that's how it works it's a very functional uh, kind of uh, tradition my name is felipe rangel and my other last name is Piscini. My uh, ancestors in Puerto Rico uh, were people who came from Europe. Uh, Rangel is actually German. And that's how you pronounce it, Rangel. But we say Rangel in Puerto Rico is a you know, different pronunciation. Piscini is, actu is actually from Corsica, from Italy area, you know. And my, gran my grandfather from my mother's side basically are other people who basically came, you know, his ancestors came through. The Gigante is a concept that was created in Puerto Rico, and that's why we call it Vejigante, and Vejiga, Vejiga is a name that comes from the cow bladder that is being used. And it's uh, basically an uh, instrument to do mischief to people in the town of Ponce. When you see a masquerader, they usually have these cow bladders and they usually use these to hit people around the street. That's the initial ball of the gigantes or the carnival ball. And by the way, Venice is the birthplace of carnaval. Spanish uh, took it upon themselves in Andalusia and they brought it into the Caribbean with the conquest. I started off being a teacher in Brooklyn, PS46. As a bilingual teacher, I noticed that uh, most kids were from my native land. They were from Puerto Rico and, and a lot of others from the Caribbean, you know. But I noticed that they didn't know much about their background. Well, since my job is to teach kids how to read and write and do math and science, I said, why not use the culture? So I started teaching my kids to use art and to use their culture and to their backgrounds and we created a play. We had to study uh, the culture of Puerto Rico and how that, you know, integrated with their, cult their cultural background. And we had to study the whole thing and uh, we presented this in the school as a holistic, you know, presentation. Uh, I had mothers sewing traditional dresses for the girls. I had uh, dress codes for the boys, how to play the congas and whatnot, and pleneras, we had those too. And that's how I got them involved. After that success story, because my principal was blown out of the water with this. <laughs> so, you know, he was like, oh my God, this is so wonderful. People, yeah, you know, my kids were playing the music, they were dancing to the music, they were doing everything through music. So my kids learned the culture through that and also learned the, you know, the reading, the writing, the math and everything else. Le years later, I started liking the fact that I was doing the art. So I said, let me do it myself. And it took me about 10 years to produce something that was adequate. But another maybe 20 years after that, it took me to the level where I'm at now. So, uh, of course, I had to go back to Puerto Rico, uh, look at what the other artists in Puerto Rico were doing and uh, creating my own style. It starts with basically going and, and creating a mold out of cement or clay. This is made out of clay, it's smaller. It's a rooster, the ones that you had seen up there are, are representative of this. Now the bigger ones, this one would be, I would say this one and the other one in the corner. Uh, then you have to sand it down, smooth it down. And then when you're applying paper to this, you have to apply a non-sticking agent like an aluminum foil. But then once it's secure that way, then he applies layers and layers of paper. You start with the face, 
And then to the face, you add the eyes, you cut out the eyes, and you cut out the mouth. You open the mouth up as far as you can open it so that you either add teeth or you don't. The teeth are all paper mache as well. They each one are constructed into the mouth. Sometimes with this one, for example, it has a tongue. That needs to be constructed outside of the mask. <laughs> so that is added to the, to the mouth, and then you have to paper mache it into the mouth. The horns are the same thing. The heavier horns usually carry other horns. So you either paper mache it at the base, and you make sure that the base is really, really strong, and you add the other horns to it. The basic concept is that the face needs to hold everything together. So how many layers the face needs to be? I would say a good number would be 25 to 30 layers of paper. When you dry this in the sun, this thing is like solid rock. I think it's important to connect to our traditions because there is history involved. There is a tradition involved from many generations of people. And it identifies you as a person who, you know, you come from that background. So I think it's important. So is, a, you know, doing this for Puerto Ricans is the same way for anybody else. The world is about differences, yes, but it's also appreciating those differences to make us more connected. And uh, once I understand who I am as a Puerto Rican, I would understand better a Dominican or a Jamaican or whoever because I know who I am and therefore I have the knowledge to apply to it to any other culture you know what I mean I think that is the way I think it should work uh, appreciation of somebody with a different background comes from knowing their own